So an interesting development with this crisis is cabinet ranking. And it's something that um, hasn't had a great deal of commentary, but with the situation the Prime Minister is in, um, it may get more discussion. So, as we know, Boris Johnson is still in intensive care. The good news is his condition has improved. I hope it continues that way. Um, but basically, Dominic Raab is effectively caretaker Prime Minister, as was the announced procedure um, before this happened, i.e. before Johnson was taken to hospital. So as it stands, Boris Johnson is still the formal Prime Minister, but he's obviously incapacitated to a large extent. Um, he could perhaps issue directives over the phone, depending on whether the doctors let him do that or not. But the man's in hospital, he's clearly um, not fit to be running cabinet meetings as per usual. So I think it's right that uh, the power has been designated somewhat. Um, importantly, though, Rab still has some limitations. For example, according to the I, um, he still needs cabinet approval for major decisions. He has no power to hire or fire cabinet appointees, so he can't sack anyone. Uh, he can't have an audience with the Queen. Um, he can make decisions on war, apparently, but uh, again, that would be subject to, or rather not make decisions, make proposals. Um, whereas usually that would presumably be something only the Prime Minister could do. Um, in the United Kingdom, we have the traditional great offices of state. Now, I'm not talking about the really ancient roles, for example, Lord High Chancellor and so on, that you would have had under the monarchs. But in the last, let's say, century, uh, they're traditionally, or rather within the last century, seem to be the Prime Minister, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, which for international viewers is our finance minister, um, the foreign secretary, uh, secretary of state as it would be known in the United States, and home secretary, which I guess in the US would be, um, I don't know what that would be, I guess, uh, uh, secretary of homeland security, something like that. I'm not sure what their equivalent would be. But those four offices, prime minister, chancellor, foreign secretary, home secretary, are considered the four most powerful jobs in government. Uh, the BBC had a very good series uh, exploring uh, the great offices of state, um, looking into the former holders of those departments. But one thing that's been interesting about this crisis is positions that usually would be less important, i.e. would be seen as middle-ranking cabinet positions, are now getting more um, prominent. The most obvious example of this is health, the health department, because we're in the middle of a health pandemic. Um, so Matt Hancock has been one of the most high profile cabinet ministers during this crisis uh, by, by virtue of his job, he's had to be. Um, and so he will certainly go down as the health secretary who had to face coronavirus. Um, likewise, the secretary of state for environment, food and rural affairs, and that isn't even a fixed department, it changes periodically. Um, is currently George Eustace, and he too has had a more high-profile position because of the um, of the situation that we're in, because of food supplies and so on. So we see the situation where cabinet rankings can change. By the same token, uh, in a time of war, the Defence Secretary would generally be given more importance, understandably so, um, perhaps fifth even after the four great officers of state. So that's an interesting development. Apparently, if Dominic Raab gets the virus, the next in the chain of command would be Rishi Sunak as Chancellor. Now, usually, like I say, Chancellor, to all extents and purposes, has traditionally been de facto number two in this country. What needs to be understood about the British system is we don't have a formal number two in government. In the United States, it is the vice president. Actually, the vice president uh, chairs the cabinet meetings and then it's secretary of state. It's quite a strict chain of command in the American system. I believe next is Speaker of the House. I'm not sure. I can't recall. But in Britain, it's a little bit more flexible. It's not set in stone. Um, Dominic Raab isn't just foreign secretary. He's also first secretary of state, which on his appointment was seen as more sort of a, a grace and favour role. Um, for his strong Brexiteer credentials and the fact he'd been loyal to the Prime Minister. 
So now that's kind of attained a new meaning. He is longer serving than Rishi Sunak, so that could explain why he and not Sunak is now serving in this capacity. Uh, looking at the cabinet, I think it's probably the right choice. I think Rab is as qualified as anyone. Um, I have to be honest, I quite like Dominic Rab. I get quite a good vibe from him. I think he's capable. I think he's... Um, I definitely think he could be a prime minister. So I, I don't think this is like, oh God, the country's in his hands. I think he's very capable. And I trust the prime minister's judgment in putting that onto him. Of course, everyone wants the prime minister to get better. It's And I don't think that's phony. I mean, I, I don't agree with all of Johnson's politics. I haven't always agreed with his positions, but one cannot help but admire the fact that this is a man who really did you know, just like the NHS workers really, really work flat out for the people and now he's um now he's suffering for it. I mean that that's the way it is. Uh so I do think Johnson will gain a lot of admiration for the fact that not that he's got the virus, but the fact he's worked flat out, uh, even when he was clearly sick. I think that will go down as kind of um in in a good way. Um so that chain of command is not set in stone, uh, but if Rab gets sick, then it's Rishi Sunak. After Sunak, I'm not sure what the procedure would be after that. Um, it would be very unusual for a health secretary to suddenly be elevated to the role of prime minister like that. But Hancock has been high profile. Um, possibly someone like Michael Gove, uh, who's an experienced politician. He's a lot of, I think he's one of the longest serving cabinet ministers of this conservative government. I mean, serving under three prime ministers, so it might be Gove next, who knows, but um, this is important perhaps that we have it clearly defined, because if, for example, a prime minister was assassinated, there would have to be a chain of command, whereby it would immediately have to go to the next in charge. Now, there is a bit of a difference in the UK insofar as the prime minister is not head of state, so in that sense they don't have the power of an American president, the Queen is head of state. But let's say we had an exceptional situation. Let's say the entire royal family was wiped out in a plane crash. That wouldn't happen because one of them is always in a different location precisely for that reason. But if it did, and the prime minister was assassinated simultaneously, this would never happen. But then there would be an absolute emergency crisis situation and someone would have to be... I, I would imagine in that situation they would get almost temporary semi-presidential powers sort of serve as... A, as a de facto president until uh, the next in line to the throne is immediately, you know, it would be some sort of um, situation like that, I would imagine. But this um, this is a very exceptional situation. I mean, of course, we shouldn't just focus on Johnson when thousands of other people are sick. But it is striking, and it is the first time. Um, well, Harold Wilson was quite visibly unwell in the second term. He was tired. He was... He'd had some heart problems. Um, and in the 19, uh, in the transition in the war, uh, Neville Chamberlain was actually dying of cancer. So he was definitely an ailing prime minister. But the last prime minister to die in office was Lord Palmerston in 1865. So you have to go that far back. Now, I don't want to be morbid because the prime minister's condition has improved. And, you know, I hope he pulls through. Um, whatever you think about politics I think Starmer is right to, I think he's hitting the right notes i.e. we will ask the important questions, we'll hold the government to account but we will also support the government's measures for example with the lockdown I think that's all an opposition leader can do in this sort of situation um, there will be some on the right who accuse Starmer of playing politics, I don't think that's fair I think he's been very, I think he's hit the right notes um, so yeah, it's just an interesting thing about chain of command. So usually in the United Kingdom, that is um, the situation we have. Prime Minister, Chancellor, Foreign Secretary, Home Secretary. Occasionally there's a Deputy Prime Minister, but it's not a mandated role. Um, under Theresa May, Damien Green was her um, de facto... Damien Green, excuse me, David Liddington. Uh, I'll need to double check that. It was either Damien Green or David Liddington was May's effective number two, rather than the Chancellor, uh, Philip Hammond. So it doesn't always go 
straightforward. Some prime ministers opt to have a deputy prime minister, but there's no actual set cabinet office for that role. It's more an honorary title. For example, Nick Clegg served as deputy prime minister under um, David Cameron, because that was a coalition government. Michael Heseltine was deputy prime minister under Margaret Thatcher. John Prescott under Tony Blair. But it's, um, it's not a position that is actually set in stone like an actual cabinet appointment. It's more an honorary title. So Boris Johnson doesn't have a de facto deputy prime minister. Um, I don't know if John Major did. Um, I don't think Gordon Brown did. So it's not a de facto office of state. Anyway, I uh, hope that's interesting. Um, so if Dominic Rabb gets it, then Rishi Sunak will be in charge of the country. But this rotationary thing that the cabinet's doing, it may be for social distancing. It may be um, for that reason. I'm not sure if it's the best idea. I wonder, is it maybe better to have kind of one face that does the regular addresses rather than this rotationary thing? Could be wrong. Maybe that is a better approach. Let me know what you think.